Hi, welcome to today's piece of peace. We're going to be starting in John 8, 12 through 16 out of um, Our Daily Bread. The devotion today is written by James Banks and he's titled it Keepers of the Light. We'll be in John 8 and it's 12 through 16. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, um, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from, and I know where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going to. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. James goes on to write the devotion. You can download that app, Our Daily Bread, or their books online. James says, James Banks says in his devotion, they call them keepers of the light. At the lighthouse on the Cape of um, Hatteras Island, just off of North Carolina coast of the United States, there's a memorial to those who've tended the light stations there since 1803. Shortly after the existing structure was moved inland because of shoreline erosion, the names of the keepers were etched on the old foundation stones and arranged in an amphitheater fa- uh, in an amphitheater shape facing the new site the way um, that way um, as a placard explains today's victors can follow in the historical keeper's footsteps and watch over the lighthouse as well jesus is the ultimate light giver I am the light of the world, he says. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's a radical thing for anyone to claim. But Jesus said it to affirm his relationship with his heavenly father, the creator of light and life who sent him. When we look to Jesus for salvation and follow his teachings, we're restored in relationship with God. And he gives us a new power and purpose. This is something that stood out to me here. His transforming life and love, the light of all mankind, shines in us and through us and out to a dark and sometimes dangerous world. As believers in Jesus, we become keepers of the light. Many others see his light shine from us and discover the life and hope he alone can give. James's charge to us is this. In what practical ways can you shine Jesus' light? Where is God calling you to be obedient to him today? And then his prayer is, Jesus, I praise you for I praise you for your light and love. Help me to shine for you. That sort of brings me into what God was sort of speaking to me prior to reading this devotion, but I was just sort of journaling what was uh, the beauty of my day yesterday and thanking him for relationships and thanking him. He's created um, my potential, or I tend to move more in a relational way. And my husband's more of a servant. So he he likes to do projects and serve people and that. And um, I'm, I'm more like drop everything and I'm going to be right there with you. Let's Let's be relational and totally different people. However, there was this big relational piece yesterday just in my granddaughter and my son and friends. And there was uh, just this beautiful ebb and flow of how I function well. My husband was working on a project, which is how he functions well. And um, as I was journaling all this out, there was another piece, how God's sort of been working on me to take when I have an offense that's been done to give that to him. And ask for a blessing over that instead of muddling it through in my thought pattern, um, placing a judgment on somebody. So he's been sort of pruning this piece of me through this season. And 
and again, it was just like a, a couple of things had sort of come up that were sort of something that kind of poked at my spirit and or poked at my if being offended, my emotions, my my feelings being hurt, whatever throughout the day. And as I was journaling about it this time, I didn't ruminate over what my thoughts were or place a judgment or vow on that situation. It was just like I started to write it out to Jesus. Jesus, I bring this to you. This happened yesterday as well as all these beautiful things that I'm thanking you for. But I realized that there's like, mm, there's this edge or something that I need to just bring to you so that I can have your perspective on it. Jesus talked about, he knew where he came from. He knew where he was going because the father was with him in it and I feel the same as of that in writing out what was happening like Lord here's the offense that I felt I didn't have to ruminate about it I didn't have to think about it I didn't have to rehash it over my head or place a judgment or vow on that person and then behave in a way that would reiterate that judgment and that vow it was just almost like just bring it to God talk about it with him and then pray a blessing over the situation and and just you know, declare health over that. As I did that, I asked him to take that sting from me and to help um, me choose unity and not division in my thoughts. And I asked him to please bless the situation and bless the people. Um, and then uh, please place your love for them in my heart and allow me to hand my questioning, my offended heart to you, Jesus. I said, please pour your grace in me and through me to each of them in Jesus' name. And then I choose to love, I write. He says, Janelle, that is just it, Janelle. Love is more powerful than any other response will ever be. And um, thank you for bringing that to me. I can bathe it in my grace and my love, God says to me. But I, just even in the devotion when James was writing, he was just like, they cry out to God, not because they have lost hope, but because they believe God is listening. Nope. Sorry. His transforming love, life and love, the light of all mankind, shines in us and through us. So when I asked him that, would you please pour your grace in me and through me to this situation? And that's what he was doing. So it just felt like, wow, this is really starting to move in a way where the Lord is really um, got a hold of it. But the profound words... Love has more power than any other response ever will. That brings us to Jesus Calling Today by Sarah Young. Download her app or order her book online. But today, as she writes from God's perspective to us, approach each new day with desire to find me. That was it. Coming into this morning and writing that stuff out, I wanted to find him, not how I usually responded, but how he could. Before you get out of bed, I have already been working to prepare the path that will get you through this day. There are hidden treasures strategically placed along the way. Some of the treasures are trials designed to shake you free from earth shackles. Others are blessings that reveal my presence. Sunshine, flowers, birds, friendships, answered prayer. I have not abandoned this sin-wrecked world. I am still richly present in it. Search for deep treasures as you go through this day. You will find me all along the way. That's today's piece of peace. Blessings.